peace we the youth believe can only be achieved when all aspects when all people come together as one and in the past three days you have seen that the youth we have done all we can within our capacity but we are looking upon the leaders right now the leaders of the international community the politicians the lawmakers and the religious leaders to help us fulfill this goal signing this agreement it may not bring peace immediately ladies and gentlemen but what I'd like to say is that it is a step in the right direction and the youth need your help so now we will we'll proceed with the signing ceremony of the unity of religion agreement the unity of religion agreement is a groundbreaking promise of religions to unite condition unconditionally and without discrimination to achieve true peace With this conference, we want to set a worldwide sign against divisions that lead to hate and violence. We want to explore ways to peace, justice, and a responsible way of dealing with non-human nature as our co-creation. As churches in Germany, we have tried to make a contribution to this effort. In the year 2017, the 500th anniversary of the Reformation. The Reformation started in this country and led to the separation of the Roman Catholic and the Protestant churches and to terrible wars within Europe with tens of millions of victims. As Protestants, we had decided to celebrate this 500th anniversary not by strengthening our own identity through putting down the others, but by rediscovering Jesus Christ as the center of our faith. We understood that we could do that only together with our Catholic and Orthodox brothers and sisters. And we were overjoyed that they gladly accepted our invitation so that for the first time in history, we celebrated the Reformation anniversary together in ecumenical unity. <laughs> this experience is a vivid example, an, a, an example from within one religion, the Christian religion, for how much we gain all together when we begin to overcome our divisions. Let us as global religious communities be strong forces towards a global reorientation of civilization and towards the political changes which are equally necessary. His Holiness Pope Francis was pleased to be informed of the 10th World Assembly of Religions for Peace, and he sends cordial greetings to all those participating in the meeting in Lindau. As the participants reflect on the theme, caring for our common future, advancing shared well-being, His Holiness prays that this anniversary assembly may bear fruit in a renewed commitment to the works of concord and fraternity among the religious leaders and their respective communities.
every religious tradition has its own religious and spiritual resources to help us protect our common home. I think it's a tremendously rich time where we can see the interface of science and spirituality. And this for me is really hopeful. The very fact that arguably the most important religious figure is addressing this issue highlights how enormously significant and important it is for all of humanity. Islam has a lot of benefits the In the Jewish tradition, we're taught that God asked of the human race that we would be partners in creation. Uh, this is not an economic or a financial. This is, at the core, a religious obligation. We are not the owners of the earth. We are stewards. Have inherited the earth, and we have to keep it to handle it over to the next generations. Time to act is now. The theme of this assembly has been very carefully chosen and formulated after an extensive consultation among the Religions for Peace family and deep reflection by the assembly preparatory committee. And this theme is, as you all know, caring for our common future, advancing shared well-being. Events and developments around us in the last decade or so have shown that our human community is at a critical crossroads. Our future can no longer be taken for granted. Our theme makes the serious point that this future will depend on how we address the shared well-being of all and of everyone. Twenty-three years ago, the UN member states signed the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change. But signing convention is not the same thing as taking action. This really is our last chance to head off the disaster of human-made climate change. We have not taken this with the sense of urgency that a real solution requires. There is no way to make this change unless it's a very deep change in our human behavior. That what's happening today and the destruction of the earth is a moral crisis, then we're going to do things differently. We've reached the point of recklessness so that we need religious leaders to speak out to politicians, corporate leaders. We need the moral voices to actually take a greater stand. 85% of the global population belongs to a religious community. This is the largest constituency of the human family. The issue of climate change is one of those issues that truly can galvanize people of faith. This has to move to action. It's time for people of faith around the world to mobilize and to press our political leaders to do the right thing. It doesn't matter whether you're a believer or a non-believer. Climate change affects all of us. We all have to recognize that the earth is sacred and that we're part of it. You have a calling. You have a sacred mission in the world to care for this creation and care for everyone and everything. If all of us can come together to behold the beauty, the sacredness of creation, we will be empowered to do the right thing.
we share a profound moral obligation to make care for tropical forests a top spiritual priority. From all regions of the planet and from all of the world's religions and spiritual traditions, we commit to respond together. We pledge to mobilize our religious communities from the grassroots to the most senior leadership to join up with the coalition of indigenous, government, civil society, business and United Nations partners already working to protect forests. We will bring our spiritual resources to bear on this issue. We will make ending deforestation a high spiritual calling. We commit to advocating for governments to adopt fulfill and expand upon commitments to protect forests and the rights of indigenous peoples. We will cast our ballots for those that stand for rainforests and environmental defenders. We see that protecting rainforests is part of a larger moral fabric that includes social and economic justice, respect for human rights and human dignity, and achieving peace and equality. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, here is the action point on the Interfaith Rainforest Initiative. The Religions for Peace World Assembly endorses the Face for Forest Declaration and commits to work with the Interfaith Rainforest Initiative on an action agenda two, one, raise public awareness about the tropical deforestation crisis, to promote teachings about the spiritual, moral, scientific, humanitarian and human rights case for ending tropical deforestation. Assist our respective places of worship, communities and organizations to take action. Encourage deforestation-free lifestyles and business practices. Advocate for government policies that protect rainforests and the rights of indigenous peoples. And six, urge national governments and the international community to put forest protection at the center of efforts to reach the goals of the Paris Climate Agreement. And I saw three unclean spirits, like frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of devils, working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth, and of the whole world, to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Revelation 16, 13 through 14. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them. For he is Lord of lords, and the King of kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Revelation 17, 13 through 14. In the warfare to be waged in the last days, there will be united, in opposition to God's people, all the corrupt powers that have apostatized from allegiance to the law of Jehovah. In this warfare, the Sabbath of the fourth commandment will be the great point at issue. For in the Sabbath commandment, the great lawgiver identifies himself as the creator of the heavens and the earth. The Sunday movement is now making its way in darkness. The leaders are concealing the true issue, and many who unite in the movement do not themselves see whither the undercurrent is tending. It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced, and that those who present the claims of the fourth commandment, thus destroying reverence for Sunday, are troublers of the people, preventing their restoration to divine favor and temporal prosperity. 
The agencies of evil are combining their forces and consolidating. They are strengthening for the last great crisis. Great changes are soon to take place in our world, and the final movement will be rapid ones.